Hi guys, it's Kelly and I'm back again with another video that is sponsored by Simon's Stamp. Today we are going to be using this adorable set. I love all things mugs. I have so many mug sets, um, but this one is Mug Hugs by Sunny Studios. And I've actually done a card with a card and a video with this before. Um, I used it for my What Would Kelly Make when we talked about doodling. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, I will link that below. It's also linked on my blog. Nonetheless, um, I wanted to do a scene with these super cute little mugs. And so I'm just giving myself some pencil lines with a T-square ruler. I'm doing lots of stamping and masking, which apparently I was trying to do too many things at once. Like my husband was talking to me and my son was running around and um, I just totally, I struggled with this card because I wasn't just concentrating on making the card. So I'm gonna be stamping in intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp because I am gonna be doing some Copa coloring. When you are stamping um, a scene, a one layer scene, you wanna stamp front to back. So everything in the forefront first, everything in the back last. Here is the first error. You can see this heart partially stamps over the cup that's in the, the back, um, which means that that part stamped on top of the mask is not actually going to stamp on the card. So error number one. Stamped a bunch of different cookies and little marshmallows. I just thought it would be cute if there were like a bunch of little marshmallows like scattered around. Um, Cause I don't know about you, but when I make hot chocolate, I shove as many marshmallows as I can in there and they do kind of fall over my countertop. So with the large stamp, it's actually um, created like a to-go cup. And nobody would have a to-go cup just like chilling on their counter. So I wanted to get rid of the top portion of it, the, the lid. So I just wiped it off with a baby wipe. I also wiped off the cup holder portion on it. Um, and then to make it, I don't know, kind of just more fun, I'm using the smaller mug, like the whipped cream from the smaller mug. So I'm just using some random masks that I had laying around. And I'm just going to stamp the top portion of it just to put some like whipped cream on the top on the top, on the cup. What is happening? Anyway, um, I thought about doing marshmallows, but then I was like, I do not want to cut all those little marshmallow masks. So I'm taking the easy route. I'm, I'm taking the easy route and I'm doing the whipped cream. Here, I have cut some strips of the, what is it? Th uh, the the post-it note tape I have is two inches. I have cut the ones on the outside are a quarter of an inch. The ones on the inside are um, an eighth of an inch to do like the bars inside the windows because I wanted them to be kind of sitting on a table in front of a window that had this snow scene going on in the background. Um, switching up my color combo just a little bit. I I actually think it was Jessica, was it Jessica Frost Ballas? I think I saw who did a um, like a pink kind of sky and I totally loved it. And so I wanted to incorporate that picked raspberry in. So I went picked raspberry, wilted violet, blueprint sketch, chip sapphire, and then I'm going to do it all again, coming all the way down with the masks still in place. I mean, I didn't even say that. I masked the left hand side and the bottom. I am flicking on some clean, clear water. I know it looks like purple water. It's not purple water. That little cup is stained, but it is clean, clear water. And then of course the perfect pearls for those of you who have been waiting for it. You knew it was coming, uh, especially if I'm doing any kind of snow or sky scene. Flick it on. I just kicked my desk. If you heard that, my apologies. Um, so I'm flicking that on and then I'm going to go in with some white acrylic paint because I really wanted to look like it was snowing. So the first time around, I am, I'm using a stiff bristle brush and the side of my acrylic block. I didn't even water it down. The second time around, I am going to water it down a little bit. And then I'm also, I'm going to like blot some off um, and then put like frost in the corners of the windows with it, with the watered down version of the acrylic paint. If you decide to do any of these techniques with the acrylic paint, please wash your paintbrush, your bowls, your surface, whatever, because when it dries, um, it's kind of like hard plastic and it's really difficult to get up. So I'm gonna make sure this is completely dry. And then I'm gonna do some heat embossing. You could certainly do the heat embossing first, but I wanted to see where the the frost was gonna come out to because I didn't want the snowflakes to really be in front of the frost. Um, also, I did use my my um, embossing buddy, um, but I dropped one of the stamps. You saw me kind of like the panic moment. And I'm gonna be using a couple of different embossing powders. So this first one that I'm using is the Shimmering Pearl from Nuvo. This is just a clear glitter um, 
embossing powder. Why couldn't I think of that word? Whoa. Um, clear glitter embossing powder. So you're not really going to be able to see it too much. Um, and then I'm also going to use white Simon Says Stamp embossing powder. The third embossing powder I am going to use, and you're not even really going to get to see it because um, I had to put my head like right over them. So you see all of the ones that I've stamped here. I actually used my Misty to put the stamps directly back on top of the snowflakes I had already stamped. And then I hit it with this Wow Glow in the Dark embossing powder. All of them. Whether they were clear or they were white, um, I used all of them. Here I'm doing the... Um, I'm using Distress Ink. And here I've realized that my ma <laughs> my masks are hanging over the edges and I'm actually putting just random stripes in the middle of my wall because I forgot to remove them. So I had to go back and remove them. Thankfully, distressing. Um, well, distress oxides are pretty forgiving and I was able to cover it up and it was like no big. Um, but the distress oxide is going to come back to be a problem later. We'll worry about it then. For the table, I wanted it to look kind of like a holiday table cloth. So I'm using um, regular Distress inks in like, I don't know, yellow greens. I'm using crushed olive peeled paint and forest moss. It'll be darker the closer it is to the wall because it's the further away from us. And then in order to get some texture on it to give it that kind of like holiday feel, I'm using the circular lace stencil from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm putting that right over top of it. I'm doing the same three color blend. Um, so that it's a tone on tone. It's not really like a glaring because we're going to have a lot going on in this card. You saw all that stamping we did. So I'm going to remove all of the masks now so you can see kind of where we're at. Um, one of the things, like people always make comment about my, my nail polish. I do paint my own nails. It is regular nail polish. I don't have other people do them. It's not gel, acrylic, airbrush. It's not any of that. It's regular old nail polish. And most of the time it's like 99 cents. But nonetheless, this particular nail polish is a, a very bright pink. And so sometimes I have to be aware of that when um, I'm using my nail to like lift masks up because especially pinks and reds, I'll leave like a streak of color on my card, which is a real bummer. So I removed all of the masks. I erased all of those pencil lines. Here's where I first discover my first error, which is this heart. Now I have this marshmallow that's just randomly floating in midair on top of this heart. I just stamped right over it, guys, because I figured I could cover it up with my coloring, and I totally could. Part of the other things that I did not cut out were the inside of the mug handles. For the mug that's in the most forefront, it's not a big deal because the part that's behind it is the other cup. For this one on the left, I had to pull out my hex chart to find the colors that would match the back wall and the tablecloth so that everything was matchy matchy. Thankfully, I had both colors. It wasn't a problem. Then we're going to address the second problem I had, which was um, the acrylic paint watered down mixture bleeding through my masks. So in the bottom left hand corner and in the top left hand corner, um, it bled out a little bit. So it wasn't really a clean line. I would have added shading to these areas anyway, since they're the corners of the window. I just had to go a little bit more heavy handed to kind of cover it up. It is still a little bit textured, um, but I don't think it's anything that's going to be terribly noticeable. So I'm going to call it a win. So I'm using the C1, C3, and C5. I probably would not have went all the way out to a C5 if I didn't have those little boo-boos to fix. But since I did, I needed some way to fix them. So I added shading to the corners, um, not only just to fix the boo-boos, but because corners are darker where the things, two things join. But then I also added just a little bit of shading to the, like the inside frame of it because it would sit inside the windowsill so it would be slightly darker. And I, if you watch my videos before, you know you're going from lightest to darkest, darkest back out to lightest. That's just how I prefer to color. That's just me. Um, and I picked some cool grays to do this in the background because I have so many marshmallows, whipped cream, all that stuff. Um, and I thought that that would be, if I had to make a choice, I thought it would look better in warm grays than it would on the wall since that wall color is so warm, which is going to come back to bite me. But nonetheless, blending all those back out with a C1 
and then going to move on to coloring some of the other elements. We've got a lot going on down here. We are going to color that whipped cream with the warm grays. Um, again, this is just your own preference. When you're coloring something white, you want to make sure that you leave some white area. Um, I'm doing the W1, 3, and 5, just kind of like I did with the cool grays. And then I'm adding shading from like the tops and the bottoms. I also added kind of like a line next to the lines that were already drawn there. I don't even know. I think I went back and did that because I wanted it to look more dimensional. I don't necessarily know that I did that the first time around. For the marshmallows, I added um, shading just to kind of like the left-hand side or where one uh, was behind another. And then I blended that. I just used the W3 and the W1 for the little marshmallows because they're so tiny. And then I colored the other whipped cream the same way. Why am I telling you about this before I'm even doing it? Because I wanted, we're going to, we're going to talk about things. Um, well, if you watch my videos, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about things and then we're going to jump back and forth. I wanted to add just a little bit of something to this cup. Um, well, to each of them really. And so I decided to stamp one of the snowflakes on the cup and then I added some stripes to the large cup, which again, I probably didn't even need to get rid of those lines that I wiped off to begin with, but I did. And here we are. So the other day, um, oh no, I can't even start the story yet because we're moving on to the cookie and I got to cover this stuff up. This, see, it's hard to tell stories on the videos where I have a lot of errors because I need to tell you how I fixed all the errors. So the way that I fixed this error with the marshmallow that stamped directly over my heart was I made it a chocolate cookie. That's what I did. And chocolate cookies really fix everything in life. So this is not surprising to me. Um, basically, I just chose some darker browns. Um, the irony is like one of them's called cocoa. One of them's called milk chocolate. So they're, they are really good chocolate colors. Um, and so because that was a darker color, it really just kind of covered up that black line because it was not very large. For the star cookies, I made them more traditional sugar cookies. I'm adding shading where the stars bend in. They would be darker there and there would be a highlight on the outside edge. I also added a little bit more shading to where the, because it, it's drawn to look like it's laying flat. So the points that are furthest away from us, I added some more shading to that as well. Um, oh, the candy cane. So I kind of outlined it with a C1. I left the center completely white. And then I'm going to add shading up from the bottom um, with those same like cool grays that I used for the window. Just again, to kind of set it apart because um, we have so many whites going on in this card. And then I'm going to pick some pinks and purples and do the same thing. So the shading is just going to be like one little flick of color up from the bottom. So the other day, um, the way that my schedule works, I, I'm a shift worker. So my schedule is pretty much all over the place. We're open 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. That's just, that's what my job is. And um, so I worked a day shift. I work day shift every other week. So one week is day shift, one week is afternoon shift. And um, on day shift, sometimes my mother, a lot of times my mother will save my, my bacon and she will let me come home from work and nap um, instead of immediately picking up my son because I get off work like early afternoon-ish. So sometimes she'll let me come home and nap. And um, so I sent my husband a text message. Hey, do you care if I lay down? I had like three hours of sleep. Will you pick up Peanut? He says he will. So I lay down. <laughs> oh, so funny. I wake up at 6.20. I wake up at 6.20. I have to be to work at 6.30 in the morning. Like, I have to be there at 6.30. I work about 25 minutes away from where I live. So I wake up. I walk out into the living room. My husband and my son are standing there in their coats. My husband typically takes my son to my mom and dad's house in the morning before he leaves for work. And um, he, they're standing there in their coats. I am completely panic stricken. I told you I just did a hundred years worth of laundry. So all of my clothes are in the basement. I'm running around in no pants and a t-shirt. My husband's like, what are you doing? I said, I have to, I'm going down. I have to get clothes. I have to get clothes. I have to, I have to leave. I have to, I have to work. And he's like, where are you working? Which is, I guess, really sad that I have so many jobs that he doesn't, neither one of us even know wh which job I'm supposed to be at. But nonetheless, and I'm like, so I tell him and I was like, he was like, why do you, why do you have to go in there? And I said, I'm working day shift this week 
I have to be there at 6.30. Um, and he was like, yeah, I know. And I was like, Tuesday morning, 6.20, like, I gotta go. And he's like, babe, it is Monday night and it is 6.20 p.m. Like, I was so exhausted. I woke up from my, it was just like the perfect storm because it was the, like, exact time I would needed to be at work. And they were standing in their living room with their coats on, looking like they were about to leave when really they were just getting home. Um, so just hysterical. I was in just, I was like, you know what? I'm going back to bed. Never mind. Disregard this whole conversation. I'm going back to bed. So then two nights later, this is how, this is how having, I mean, I would not change it for the world, but this is how having children affects your life. So two, two days later, um, my four-year-old gets up in the middle of the night. And he comes into our bedroom and he's kind of like crying. And I'm like stumbling out of bed. What's the problem, buddy? And he's like, there's a stink bug in my room. And I'm like, okay. So I go into his bedroom. I'm like, where is it? He's looking around. And then he looks at me and he goes, huh, must not have been real. Like, I'm like, what? What? So apparently he's, my son is dreaming about stink bugs. So I get him all tucked back in. I go back into the bedroom. My husband is coming out of the bedroom and he says, um, he's going to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, okay, I'm going back to bed. So I get into bed and that's it. The whole thing. So then the next night, my son is like, oh, I was, I, mommy got up in the middle of the night and my husband goes, oh, you mean when mommy thought that it was morning? And he's like, no, in the middle of the night last night. And he looks at me and he goes, you got up in the middle of the night last night? And I was like, yeah, he thought there was a stink bug in his room. And he was like, oh, I didn't hear him. I was like, we literally talked to each other. Like we had a conversation. I saw you, you were out of bed. You went to the bathroom. We, we talked. And he was like, oh, I remember going to the bathroom, but pretty much nothing else. And I'm like, <laughs> how funny is that? Like our lives are just so tired. You can't even remember where you have to be, what time of day it is, or when you actually got up in the middle of the night and had a full-blown conversation. Well, not full-blown. He just told me he was going to the bathroom, but you know what I'm saying. So just very, very comical things that happen in our regular everyday life. Um, so here I've been coloring lots of things. <laughs> I'm not talking about any of them. Basically, I shaded all of them the same. I'm adding shading to the left and right hand sides of each object because I'm doing a center highlight. For this mug here in the center, I, um, I'm doing it a little bit differently because I wanted the mug to be kind of a gradient. So I wanted it to be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. Um, but mostly, you know, using three color blends this time around. Um, I chose, I tried to choose more desaturated colors because I chose this, this vanilla-ish, this antique linen in the background. And, um, I didn't love it with the, in combination with the cool colors in the background. And I was trying to find a way to make them all work together. So I kept choosing really desaturated colors, thinking that maybe that would bring it together once all the coloring was done, uh, I went in with a white gel pan, pan, it's not a pan, Kelly, it's a pen, a white gel pen. What is wrong with my enunciation today? Oh, hang in there, guys, it's almost over. Um, anyway, added a bunch of details with my, with my pen <laughs> and, um, just, you know, for, I don't know, some, something different to, to put on the cookies to put on the mugs. So I did kind of like little um, snowflakes on the big snowflake mug. I added um, some cross hatching on one. I did some like ruffled icing on another. Um, I did a like snowfall effect on the one mug. Um, so just lots of, of different details going on there that I thought would make it more interesting. You certainly don't have to do this, but I was trying to, um, I was trying to break up the design a little bit. I was also trying, especially with these two, because they're the same color, they're those violet colors. I was trying to make them very different from one another, even though they were the same color. I was not successful. Um, I'm going to outline everything except for the window. I'm going to outline just the stamped images because I want them to kind of come forward. Um, and then I decided I didn't like the colors. So I'm going back in with this 
what is this, RV04 for this one in the back to change that color. And then I really just didn't love the antique linen. So here what I've done is I have a, just a scrap piece of paper. I've put some antique linen on it. I'm trying a bunch of Copic markers over top of it to see which one I like. What I ended up settling with was a W3. It made it cool enough um, that it didn't look as weird or awkward as it did when it was like that super warm vanilla color. So I'm just coloring right over that. Um, this part got a little difficult because I don't have a black edge on the side of that window frame. Um, so I'm trying to be very careful to make sure I keep that line straight as I am covering it up. I did go one direction and then the other to make sure that everything was covered seamlessly. I was so pleased with how well they covered um, over the oxides. It wasn't patchy or weird or anything like that. So speaking of changing colors, once I cooled down the background, I really didn't love the desaturated colors. So I'm going back in with a VO4 for the violet colors and just really brightening them up. Liked that so much better. Um, I'm going to do a stacked sentiment here and it is the worst stacked sentiment in the history of stacked sentiments because I don't even know what I was doing. But anyway, I'm using the tape trick to do it. Um, so I'm with the parts I don't want to stamp, I'm covering with tape. I'm inking up the parts I do want to stamp, removing the tape, stamping it down, and then cleaning off the stamp, repositioning it, and doing it all over again. Because it says wishing you a cup of cheer, which I thought was really cute, but in order for it to fit the best way on my card, I needed it to be stacked, and I didn't even stack it well. It's all, I don't even like offset. It's weird. It's weird. But anyway, one of the things that I want to tell you before we're completely done with this video and why I stamped all those snowflakes in the um, glow in the dark embossing powder is because this is actually part of my friend Michelle Lupton's um, Christmas card challenge. And basically she asks people, friends, family, followers to give her challenges. And this one is glow in the dark. So she asked me to participate. I had a terrible time trying to get it on camera. So I am hold this is me holding it up to the light. I will turn off the light. You will be able to see the glow in the dark part for approximately one second. This is a still image. This was the best way for me to show you what it looks like with the glow in the dark um, embossing powder. It came out super cool. I think my son will have such a good time with this. But then that is the whole card. It looks way cooler in real life. I will link to Michelle's blog below. You can go check out hers. Her card is also way cooler than, like her take on the glow in the dark was way cooler than mine. Um, but that's it. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.